Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Well, cash isn't always king in modern businesses, but one local restaurant is changing its plastic-only policy after people called it unfair. Also angry Detroiters venting to city council about the Marathon oil refinery. And we'll start there tonight at 6. Good to have you with us. For years, the Marathon refiners' emissions have brought a lot of complaints. Sometimes the concerns have been about the environment, but most recently they've been about the smell. The company today tried to allay the neighbors' fears, but as Rod Maloney shows us, the neighbors weren't buying it. So what is that old real estate bromide location, location, location? For the residents of this neighborhood, there is nothing that is more clear to them than just that, because their location puts them right across the street from the Marathon Refinery. And they say there are times during the day when breathing is all but impossible. Today's meeting was supposed to be a full committee of the whole session, but because of a lack of public notice, it became a town hall instead. Marathon scientist Honor Sheard looked to set a conciliatory tone by calling neighbors partners and making the case Marathon contributes only slightly to the area's air quality. This chart shows that we contribute only 3% of the emissions in a two mile radius. This is a very heavy, heavily industrialized area. This is actual emissions, again, available on the MDEQ website. This did not go over well with Southwest Detroiters who have complained bitterly for years about their air quality. Emerald Lockridge led that charge. I am so sick of that little 2% pie. Can we just smash that and kill it? Marathon is 100% of my problem, of our problems. We can't breathe in our houses. We're all sick and we're miserable and it's a horrific situation. This. It's offensive that the community has to go through this. It's offensive that Marathon is sitting there chilling like this community isn't going through hell on a daily basis. On January 30th, there was a major flare incident, a propane line problem. Detroit's Homeland Security Director told the crowd the city is looking to improve its response in such situations. Now, because this was a town hall only, we didn't hear much from city council members, but uh, Council President Brenda Jones did say that she's very frustrated with this situation and certainly wants to see more. So we're likely to get city council action, real city council action in the days to come. Back to you. And, and any idea what will happen once they are involved, Ron? Council, I'm speaking of? Well, you know, Kimberly, it's hard to say, but, the, but there are a couple of things at play here. Marathon has some things that it wants to do, like store some pet coke on the property. They need city council permission to do that. And so they, there will be that discussion. And knowing how the city council feels about how the neighbors are treated by business anymore with the community uh, development agreements that they uh, like to have now, uh, it's likely that there's going to have to be some meeting of the minds here to try and fix this problem. Indeed, folks are fired up about it, too. Okay, Rod, thanks. Well, let's turn our attention to the weather because a new batch of rain looms again. Yeah, here we go. Ben's here with a check of the radar. Hi, Ben. Hey, guys. Yeah, just start the clock over. Uh, it's been light stuff so far, even though uh, we really have to go all the way down here into parts of Indiana and southwest Michigan before we see the significant rain, but it is definitely out there. Those are lightning strikes, and those are definitely some heavy thunderstorms, although nothing severe uh, as of right now, nor do we expect it. However, it's the heavy rain that's going to be the issue tonight as we're expecting to see those totals really start to stack up, especially after midnight. Lakeshore flood advisors are out, not necessarily because of the rain, but because of the wind. Everything is pushing the water off of some of these very high lake levels and right onto the shoreline of Santa Lac, St. Clair County, and also Wayne and Monroe County. So if you're along the Lake Huron or Lake Erie shorelines, keep in mind that those advisories are in effect through tomorrow. Severe risk also pops up tomorrow. It's the lowest on the scale, but it's out there. It's a marginal risk and we're talking late afternoon into the evening as if that's not enough there are some other headaches to discuss in the seven day forecast but a nice payoff at the end that's coming up in a few minutes guys hey ben put the phone down at least in the car that is the pitch in lansing today from those who say drivers who want to talk on the phone should be required to use a hands-free headset mara mcdonald live downtown tonight mara the first hearing on a new bill so let's look at the likelihood of it becoming law you know, Devin, there is a lot of interest in this bill, so I would say that this has a good chance of getting out of committee and moving forward. And this bill essentially says this. You cannot do this in the car anymore. You would be required to have this. And if you still did this, you're looking at increasingly expensive tickets. 
you know, we're a family that nothing bad has ever happened to until this happened. And I would ask all of you to think about that. This can happen to your children, to your family. Steve Kiefer testifying in front of a House panel, the General Motors executive asking lawmakers to pass a bill that would require drivers to be hands-free if they're using a phone in the car. His 18-year-old son Mitchell was killed by a distracted driver. I really hope that you guys can all find it in your heart to, to help us make the roads safer and, and really save lives around Michigan and around the country. The bill would only allow law enforcement or other emergency personnel to use their phones without a hands-free device. The suggested fines, $100 for a first violation, $250 for a second violation. The bill is backed by a number of advocacy groups. I can tell you myself, I've uh, been bicycling and stopped, tried to make eye contact with the driver so I know they see me, and I can't do that because they're on their, their phone, their the eyes are on their phone. And in that moment, I know they're taking whatever is on that screen as more important than, than my safety. Back here live, one carve out in this bill that would allow the public to simply use their phone like this in the car is if you are calling in an emergency or you're in an emergency situation. And something to remember as all of this discussion goes on in Lansing, it is already illegal to text and drive in Michigan. We're live downtown tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. And sad to say, there's a good chance you see people doing that every day when you're out on the roads anyway. Yeah, every all right, we'll day. continue to follow it, Mara. All the time. Yep. Michigan lawmakers spent part of the day talking snow days. State senators voted schools don't have to stick to the 180 day calendar, so four snow days during this year's polar vortex might not have to be made up. But the bill isn't in effect yet because lawmakers can't agree on whether schools' hourly employees should be paid for the snow days. Schools currently get six free snow days with a waiver for three additional snow days. Many districts reached nine or more snow days this year. Michigan's House will vote on the bill later this week. Police in Livonia are asking for your help in finding a man who is missing and he has dementia. Joe Willem has been missing since this morning. Uh, Joe, again, uh, suffering with dementia, last seen driving a cherry red 2011 Ford F-150 pickup. Uh, here's the license plate number. We have that as well. It's a Michigan plate, CNJ 517. So if you uh, know anything of the whereabouts of Joe or the truck, you're asked to contact Livonia police right away. The Clawson Aldi grocery store on West 14 Mile in Crooks is back open. Last night, the store was shut down and court papers were found taped to the doors. Apparently, Aldi owed a bill it didn't pay. That bill went to court and ended up in collections. So they shut the store down for a couple of hours to sort out the situation. Aldi appears to have paid what was owed and the store opened this morning without incident. Mixed results for General Motors in the first quarter earnings report. The company beat earnings projections thanks to making more money per each new truck sold. GM also saved over $400 million by cutting thousands of jobs, of course. Overall sales and market share, though, down. GM selling 7% fewer cars than this time last year. Well, we're all familiar with the old saying, money can't buy happiness, but some people were recently upset to learn paper money wouldn't buy them food either. Steve Garagiola is alive with the controversy surrounding the cashless policy some businesses have adopted and a lesson learned by one restaurant in downtown Detroit. It's a growing trend for a lot of new restaurants to go cashless, credit and debit cards only. But at least one pizzeria in downtown Detroit found out a lot of people still like good old fashioned money. Moots Pizzeria opened in January and followed a growing trend of going cashless. Credit card, debit card, pay with your phone. Pretty much the only payment they did not accept was actual money. It seemed like a great idea. Pros of being cashless are uh, safety, security and hygiene. So our, we're never at risk for someone to come in here trying to take cash from us or from, God forbid, internally being embezzled from. But the cashless system got mixed reviews from customers. Some people totally understood when I you know, kind of explained to you, like, oh, it's a lot cleaner, it's a lot safer, blah, blah, blah. A lot of people agreed. Uh, some people disagreed and felt it was un-American or I don't know. We got a lot of varied feedback. Critics of the cashless system say it discriminates against a large segment of the population that doesn't use credit or banks. At Moots, they don't want to shut out anybody. The customer is king. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, without them, we have nothing. And good old fashioned money still works. Good old fashioned cash, yeah. Yep, greenbacks. <laughs> 
Yeah, he said the bottom line is the most important thing for a business is to listen to the customers. And some of those customers apparently got pretty angry. So at Moots, your cash is still good. Kimberly, Devin, about back that. to you. Pizza looked good in there too, by the way. Steve, I'm wondering, you know, I never really <laughs> thought about it because I never have cash, but how widespread is it that the pushback against cashless restaurants, I mean, obviously it's a lot, I guess. Yeah, you know, I was really surprised by that when I looked into it a little bit. Uh, the city of Philadelphia and the whole state of New Jersey is in the process of banning cashless business. Uh, New York, Chicago, San Francisco also in the process of doing that. So we are not getting away from good old fashioned money anytime soon. How about that? Okay. Thank you, Steve. Thought it was where it was all <laughs> That's headed, right? right? Yeah. There we go. Our Lester Holt and his team putting together NBC Nightly News coming up at 6:30. Lester joins us live from New York with a preview. Hi, Lester. Hi, I was going to ask you guys for change. You had change for a dollar, but obviously I'm parking <laughs> up the wrong tree there. <laughs> nope. <laughs> anyway, let me tell you what's ahead tonight on Nightly News. We're going to talk about a new FDA warning about some popular sleep medications, why the FDA says it's acting now. Plus, the death of director John Singleton brings new attention to high blood pressure and specifically African-Americans. We'll talk about that as well. And I know there's a, a new look now into why high blood pressure is so uh, common among African-American men. Yeah, some is hereditary in DNA, but also about getting the word out is a big part of this. And the family yeah. of John Singleton, of course, is now encouraging folks to get their blood pressure checked and really trying to talk about his experience to help others. Yeah, so, so important. Yeah. Okay, we'll see you in about 20 minutes, Lester. Thank you. There's an exciting new learning opportunity at one of the most popular places for local kids. Ahead, find out what's being offered in a new partnership between a local school and the Detroit Zoo. Pretty cool. Also, parents try to see their kids, of course, in the best light possible and trust them to do certain things on their own. But there is one thing almost all children are doing incorrectly to the detriment of their health. And we'll have that when we come right back.